Hi everyone, let's talk about Santa Monica, which I just did a full playthrough for. If you haven't seen that and you're wondering where all of the game is, then it's linked in the description and you can go check that out if you haven't seen it already. But if you have and you want to know what I think, that's what this video is. So let's get into it. So Santa Monica, it's a beautiful game first and foremost. I know that's a kind of shallow start to it. I'm not talking about the gameplay or the setting or anything, but it's an absolutely beautiful game. And yeah, that is what drew me to it initially. I saw on Board Game Geek, Someone said it was like a Where's Waldo, Where's Wally kind of artwork, and I can't get that out of my head now, but it's just beautifully done. Beautiful, beautiful artwork by Jeremy Nguyen. Pronunciation, I apologise. Trying. Uh, but uh, yeah, the everything from the, the artwork on all of the tiles and the funny things like the donut shops, it's all you know, appropriate to the theme of it, but I really like how it's done. And all the way down to you know, the, the foodie truck and the meeples for the tourists with the little cameras and the locals with their sunglasses and stuff. I think it's absolutely beautifully, beautifully done. But that's all very well and good. And what about the, the gameplay as well? Well, it kind of ties together because... As a tableau building game, you are building a beachfront and the cards you know, beautifully tile together in that you've got the ones that are the beachfront and the ones that are the boardwalk, you know, the, the street cards. And it, it does look absolutely beautiful as you are laying this out. It's got a beautiful table presence as the game gets going, as you are building 14 of these cards throughout the game. And it's a, it's a lovely game of of combos in scoring in, and trying to be you know, efficient in how you get these cards. And you, you can only take from the front row of this display of cards. And it has to be adjacent to something, not corner to corner. So you are restricted. You, know, you start out just with this starting tile that's got a scoring condition on it for your VIP that you start with. Whenever he moves onto certain tiles, he'll leave footprints behind and they will score you points at the end of the game for or certain tags, certain types of places that he wants to go and visit. So straight away, you are drawn to those so that you can send your VIP to them. But you know, it, it beautifully folds outwardly from there that, okay, well, I want this kind of thing, but now I've got, you know, I, I want these tourist spots. And now I've got these, these couple of tourist spots. Well, this one wants to be adjacent to a sports activity, and this one wants to be part of a chain for local spots as well. So it kind of, you know, it evolves. You've still got choice in it. It's not like, you know, the, the first few cards that you take and you are on a path. You know, it's it's very variable based on not just, you know, the, the, the cards that come out and how long they are available for because in a game, especially in a game with more players, I've only played this at two players, by the way. But yeah, the display is going to change a lot more at uh, higher player counts. So you can't be guaranteed that the thing, the thing you want is still going to be there. Even though you can see what that next card is going to be, you can plan somewhat to try and get that out but you know obviously if you take the card underneath it because you want the card behind it the other players that's that's available to everybody else now so there's a risk involved there but it's not just about choosing from those because you have the uh the i can't remember the, the name of them the the shell actions that's you know you get two different ones every game and they often allow you to get cards from different areas. Some do just let you get cards from the front as well and give you an additional power, but some let you take cards from the back row as well as you, you know, build up your currency to be able to afford them. And that does change the 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 pace of the game, or maybe, maybe not the pace of the game, but the frequency with which you'll use them. Because we did start out with, I think, Maybe, maybe not the greatest configuration to start with. We started out with the most expensive ones and they were three and four, I believe. So it took us a while to ever be able to use those things. But at the same time, they were powerful actions. But I think it is nice to have kind of a mix. You want a kind of cheaper one, so you, you do have that option to, to use them. But it, it's just, a, it's, it's a nice replayability thing that you know, those two actions are gonna be different because it comes with a load of tiles for them and they're all double-sided with different things on them. It comes with three different endgame scoring tiles that want you to be concerned with maybe the number of people that end up stranded on cards or maybe the number of cards rather than just the number of people. So you wanna group them all up even if they aren't on activity spaces, which are another thing that are driving your decisions that not only do you want the cards to be adjacent to other cards or in chains with them for the different scoring things, for the scoring on the actual cards or the end game scoring. You are also thinking about these activity circles that you've got that want maybe particular types of people or particular numbers of people to score at the end of the game. But it also makes those people occupied. And so they're not just uh, stranded doing nothing on these cards and potentially losing you points in the end game, whether it's you know losing those points for each card or just being the person that had the most uh, that gets uh, punished for 
having loads of these uh, strider people on there. And that changes the value as the game goes on as well. You can start to judge how many people that you've got. So suddenly, if you've got a load of people that are already on, on these spaces, then cards that are going to get you a load more people are more off-putting to you, or at the same time, the cards that will give you movement or the shell actions that will give you movement will be much more attractive to you based on the situation that you're in. So it's quite a... You, you can't do massive long-term planning. You can want to go for particular scoring things, want to go for these big chains. That can be a more long-term plan. But it's very dynamic in that it's based on the cards that are coming out and it's based on the situation that you are in. It's, it's, it's very good at keeping you on your toes. And you know, other people, I imagine less so at a higher player count, you, know, you, you can be aware of what your opponents are going for, especially earlier on. It's, it's harder when they've got all of these different things uh, on the go and there's, there's too much to keep track of. But you can see that, oh, they've gone for this thing that's going to reward them for having a load of activity cards. So there's this other thing here that pairs perfectly with that, so I need to take that away. So there's, there's a bit of that, uh, that element in there. But a lot of it is, you know... I'm just building uh, the greatest beach possible and not uh, not worrying too much about what everyone else is doing. And I know that's uh, that's off-putting for, for some people. There's no way for me to go and uh, kick uh, other people's sandcastles over, but that's a huge, huge plus for us. That's uh, more the, the, the way that we lean to it. So, yeah, I, th I think it's uh, a really fun you know tableau building game full of these scoring combos, and it looks absolutely beautiful. It's, uh, it's a really... A beautiful little package but the game itself hopefully you'll see from the playthrough whether or not it would be one for you i'm gonna go now thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next game bye everyone